Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by MMA veteran Luigi Fioravanti. Luigi, how are you? I'm good, man. Thanks a lot for having me on the show. Sure, no problem. Thanks for doing it. Luigi, you got a fight coming up May 18th for Flawless Fighting Championships at Flawless Fighting Championships 3. How's training been going for the fight? It's, it's been going good, man. You know, I'm out here in uh, St. Louis, and uh, I'm training with some good, with a, with a good team, uh, St. Charles MMA, and I've been working with them a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, are you permanently at this gym? Did, did you move to St. Louis, or, or is this just for this training camp you're working out there? No, I, I, uh, I moved to St. Louis uh, to, uh, to be an instructor at another gym, um, and it didn't work out there with me, so uh, I ended up leaving. Mm -hmm. And just kind of doing my own thing. Mm -hmm. Now, a couple weeks ago, you were up my ways. You were up here in Michigan doing some training. Was this uh, to prepare for this fight, or was this like a, a seminar you were doing? You know, what exactly were you doing uh, in this neck of the woods? Um, I was up in Michigan. I have a friend up there. Um, he uh, he does uh, uh, boxing, like uh, Russian style boxing, you know, Eastern European boxing, and. Uh, he also does it's called uh, Kuro Daido Juku, which is a, a Japanese form, uh, Japanese MMA. Um, it's it's pretty much just like MMA, just different rule sets, and they wear a D so when they compete in the head headgear. Mm -hmm. Now, how long have you been living in Missouri? Because I know for a very long time you were down in Florida training with American Top Team. Uh, how long have you been in Missouri? Uh, I've been in Missouri for like a year, a year and a couple months. Mm -hmm. And why decide to, to change up things now? You know, why why just not stick with American Top Team? Was it just that position they had for you being an instructor, or was there another reason why you left American Top Team? Uh, well, I, 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 uh, yeah, I mean, the, the gym that I had went to go work at was an American Top Team, and uh, it just didn't work out there. Uh, me and the, uh, the owner didn't see uh, eye to eye, um, so I ended up leaving the gym. But uh, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on good terms with American Top Team. At least mm -hmm. they think I am, you yeah. know. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I still, you know, I'm st I can still go down there and train if, if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. And this this school that you were supposed to train at in, in Missouri, or teach at in Missouri, that was an American Top Team affiliate, right? Yes. Yeah. Is, is that Tyron Woodley's gym? Yes, it is. Oh. Oh. Just, um, I mean... You don't have to say if you don't want to, but just uh, philosophies didn't work out. You know what exactly is the, uh, the um, reason? That and, you know, uh, you know, people don't really. They, you know, the thing is, is you know, people. You know, you watch on TV and you watch a fighter. You know what I mean? But you don't really get to know the person. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And right. Sometimes when you get to know the guy, uh, you don't like what you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just end. You know, just end up. You know, not liking what you. You know, find out and stuff. Right. And, you know, I mean, Nate Woodley's just, you know, he's a great uh, fighter, you know, he's a good fighter and mm -hmm. uh, a phenomenal athlete, you know, I just, uh, me and him just didn't see eye to eye on certain mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, but, you know, and that's that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so he went, my, he, went, he went his way, I went my way, so mm -hmm. that's, that's mm -hmm. all there is to mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Now, why did you decide to stay in Missouri? Why not go back to Florida to train? What, what kept you in Missouri? Um, well, yeah, you know, I, I would like to move back to Florida, um, because I'm from Florida and stuff, my family's there. But my 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 wife, she's from the Midwest, so she. I mean, we just figured we'd give we'd give St. Louis a try, at, you know, and see how it is, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Now, Florida, that's always been and probably will always be a hotbed for mixed martial arts. But Missouri, that's you know kind of flying under the radar. There's a lot of good fighters coming out of there. Uh, was that? Another reason why you decided to stick around is, is it's it's starting to be developing into a, a hotbed. Is that another possible reason why? Oh, yeah, there's some really good fighters out here. You know, there's some guys that, you know, fight from uh, St. Charles MMA. They've got a lot of good guys that fight uh, in uh, uh, Lance Benoist. He's in the UFC, and uh, they got a lot of good up-and-coming guys, a lot of guys that fight both or, or uh, you know, they're, one guy they have there is a CFA champ. You know, they, mm -hmm. they got a lot of good fighters coming out of that gym. And, uh, you know, so I, I like to train with those guys. They're really nice guys and stuff. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, you know, there's some good talent out here. Some good wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Now, the last fight that you had was October of 2011 when you fought Paul Daly up in Canada. Is this the holdup 
this not having you know the set real training you know not having uh you know the place that you thought you were going to work at not having that uh be there in place anymore was that the reason why you weren't active in 2012 or was there another reason why? Uh, i was i was injured mm-hmm. um i had some injuries um after the daily fight even before the daily fight going into the fight i was injured uh you know uh you know i hurt my foot um i actually broke my foot um but uh and i and i, I actually uh broke a couple fingers in the daily fight, so mm-hmm. uh, I just had to heal up, and, and also, like, um, you know, I, I just didn't have the right management to give me the, you know, it wasn't getting me the right fights and, and stuff like that, so, you know, it just gave me enough time to just kind of, um, you know, heal up and, and uh, just relax a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now, was that time off possibly, you know, a blessing in disguise for you, you know, maybe it was a good thing that you had this time off because, you know, you've been fighting consistently uh, since you left the UFC. I think you had like four four or five fights in 09, I think six or seven in 2010, and I think you had five in 2011. So was, was it good to have that time off? Yeah, I, I, you know, I needed it, man. My body was starting to feel it, you know. I just, um, you know, getting back, you know. I, I love to fight, you know. It's just it's the training, you know, uh, Everything starts to hurt, you know. You know, sometimes training in training in gyms, you know, it's harder than training, you know, for, than the fight, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, wow. I just need a little bit of time off to heal up and relax, you know, just to let my body, uh, you know, relax and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Now, Flawless FC, is Flawless Management, is that your new manager, is, is Flawless, and if so, is that, like, tied in together? Is, is Flawless uh, Management running this organization? Yeah, so that's, uh, that's yes, that's mm-hmm. their show. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I, they manage me. Yeah, they're my management. Yeah, and 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 that's why this this I fight. I recently is... signed with them. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Now, on May 18th, you're going to be taking on Edwin Aguilar. What are your thoughts about him as an opponent? Uh, you know, he's he's a uh, he's a Muay Thai guy. He's a very uh, seasoned Muay Thai fighter, and yeah, he's a seasoned MMA guy. And yeah, I expect him to be a tough opponent. Um. Oh. But I also expect to win the fight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, th- this is on paper. It, it looks like a good fight for you. Uh, he's he's got a little bit more uh, experience than you do, but um, you know I don't really think that that matters a whole lot. You've been in there. This isn't your first rodeo. Right, but he has a fun level of competition. Right, exactly. I, I, I was gonna, I was going to get to that. He you know he hasn't fought yeah. in the big shows. He has more fights, but he doesn't have the uh, the quality of opponents that you've fought. And, and also with with that being said. It feels like it's the right fight for you. You know, you're you're on a three fight losing streak right now. He's also on a losing streak right now. Um, is is this why you decided to take this fight? You know, kind of uh, an opponent that you're kind of on uh, the same track with. Is is that something that maybe interests you in this fight? No, you know, I mean, they were you know they were trying to get um, other opponents. Um, you know, and I, I guess they you know some opponents didn't want to take the fight against me. Uh, I don't know, uh, you know, I just, you know, I was just waiting for the right fight, and I thought that was the right fight, you know, I think mm-hmm. it's a good fight for me, mm-hmm. you know, to get the rust off and get back in the swing of things, I know he's going to come and try to take my head off, you know, mm-hmm. so it needs, you know, so i got to be sharp, you know, and i got to work, you know, my skills, i got to either keep it on the feet or take him down and submit him, mm-hmm. or ground and pound him out, you know, it's just, Mm-hmm. Just gotta. Uh, it's, a, it's a good fight for me, you know, to get back in there. Mm-hmm. Now, this is your first fight in a while, fighting in the United States. You've been fighting up in Canada and Russia, so I, I think it's you know well over two years since you fought uh, in the United States. Uh, is is that something you're looking forward to? You know, being back uh, in the United States, and I know that you've had a history uh, with uh, California, yeah. being based there as a Marine. So, is, is that something there? Yeah, you know, I, I like uh, you know. I, you know, I, I always like fighting the U.S., but uh, to tell you the truth, I like fighting overseas better. Mm. Why? Um, I just think you know, uh, it's it just it, it's just a different feel, you know. Plus, you get to you know, just the, tra- the the travel. I like to travel, so that's always fun. And then uh, you know, I just think the fans are different. You know what I mean? Like uh, than they are here. I think they're. I think uh, I don't know. You know, when I fought in Russia and stuff, it, it seems like they have a better appreciation for the, for the sport. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. they're just, they're just not, uh, you know, saying certain things or doing certain things in the crowd. Right, right. You know, or, or, or you know, talking trash to the fighters, stuff like that. You don't see that over there, you know what I mean? Like, they're respectful. Win or lose, you got their respect, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, definitely. And I think that's because, you know, uh, of the, the culture, you know what I mean? They, they, martial arts is a big part of, you know, these co- countries, you know, culture, while martial arts in our culture, you know, not not as much as it used to be, you know what I mean? It's more, you know, pro- uh, you know uh, WWE or, uh, uh, or professional football or, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like NFL, mm-hmm. NHL, stuff like that, you know, NBA. You know, team sports, you know, that's the big thing here in the U.S., mm-hmm. you know, that's, mm-hmm. that's what everybody, uh, you know, yeah. pays to see. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think in uh, like uh, overseas and Russia and some of those other Japan and some of those other countries, it, it's more of yeah. a show. It's more of an event. As in the United States, it's kind of like, exactly. well, they got this MMA thing going on, on Saturday. I have nothing to do. I might as well go to that. It's, it kind of all blends together. And I think uh, overseas, it's more of a an event than just uh, like a, another sporting event. Uh, would you agree? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know. And, and the thing too, like. I mean, here in the states, like, you know, that, that's the thing. Like, m- martial arts. I mean, it's 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 been around for you know what uh, here thirty, forty, you know, maybe forty years. You know yeah. what I mean? Like over there in these, you know, these other countries, they've been exposed to it a little bit longer. But uh, it's also like you know, their government sponsored. You know, they have government sponsored martial art events. You know, well, you know, and 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 they have martial arts in the schools. You know what I mean? So there's there's a respect there. You know what I mean? Well, mm-hmm. here it's, it's not necessarily the, the case. You know what I mean? It's more it's a team sports, um, but boxing. You know, boxing's real huge. You know, here. Mm-hmm. Now, Luigi, what is at stake for you in this fight? Because right now you're currently on a, a three fight losing streak, you know, going into this fight, what is really at stake for you here? Uh, you know, if you, if you lose this fight, you know, that that's four losses, and, and I don't know very many guys who can, can recover from that, but if you win this fight, you know, what what does that do for you, is basically what I'm trying to get at. What What's what's at stake for you uh, in this fight, if anything? Well, you know, uh, you know, it's hard to say, you know what I mean? You know, if I get in there and, and I lose, I, you know, I shouldn't be losing to a guy like Edward mm-hmm. Aguilar. I mean, anything right. can happen in an MMA fight. I'm not trying to say anything. You know, the guys, I'm not trying to say that, you know, he's a bad fighter. I, I don't think he's on my level, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, maybe I need to rethink, you know, rethink what I want to do for a living or, right. you know, rethink, uh, you know, something, you know what I mean? So, um, who knows, man, you know, uh, who knows what happens, you know, so I'm not going to know until after the fight. Mm-hmm. Is this something uh, where where you said you know it, it, should you lose this fight or if something bad happens that you'd have to um, you know rethink what you want to do? I mean you're still a very young guy. I mean 32. I mean yeah maybe in in MMA years you might be a little bit older than 32, but you know still still a young right. guy. Um, you know has that already entered your mind? You know maybe after the the Paul Daly fight had you started to, to question yourself? You know anything like that? Oh of course man. Mm-hmm. That's a th- after three losses, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, let me tell you something, man. I should have won the fight with Dirksen. Mm-hmm. The only reason why Dirksen got the nod is because two of the judges were from his hometown. Sure, sure. They're from Win- Manitoba or whatever, right. Win- Win- Winnipeg, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. my thoughts. One, one of the judges gave me, you know, uh, no, no, that did, he won by unanimous decision, but, I mean, if you watch the fight, you know, I, I was, I was, you know, I was put letter to his face and he had rubber legs, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, right. Uh, it was a close fight, regardless, but I thought I won. Um, whatever, you know. Um, that's past. But, you know, the thing is, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I haven't, you know, I haven't been fighting Chomps either, you know what I mean? Like, he fought Paul Daly. Right. You know, extremely tough guy. He just came off a knockout win, uh, not too long ago. I think just today or yesterday or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Andre Seminoff, you know, another seasoned veteran, you know, that's been around for a while, you know, so... Um, you know, uh, so, yeah, I, I still think I got some, you know, juice in the tank, you know what I mean? But, you know, I also, you know, I want to look, I want to also, you know, have my health too, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Later on in life, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't want to go in there and, and keep, you know, beating my body up and beating myself up. And then, you know, later on in life, uh, I'm going to regret it. Mm-hmm. I have to think about that as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why you see a lot of guys retiring, you know, uh, retiring at earlier and re- at earlier ages and stuff like that, you know, even though there's not too much scientific study to uh, show if there's any, you know, long-term effects. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know. Oh, oh, go ahead. Well, you know, like the NFL, they're having, they're doing a lot of studies with the, 
you know, uh, uh, traumatic brain injuries and stuff like that, like concussions and stuff like that, like, uh, right. you know, uh, what's that, pugilistic dementia or something like that, right. you know, boxers that get hit a lot in the head, mm-hmm. um, that's, you know, that's something to think about as well, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be brain dead either, you know? Yeah. We're, we're in a... A very early time in this sport because we don't know, you know, the uh, the lifelong uh, lasting effects of this sport. You know, the, Gary Goodridge, he um, was one, one of the guys that a lot of people were talking about because he's uh, suffering from symptoms sort of like that. But a lot of his damage has, you know, taken place. He, he boxed for a long time and then he also did a lot of K1 stuff. So uh, I don't really know how much uh, MMA affects that so it's the guys who are you know, right, right, yeah. right so it's the guys right now who are fighting in MMA that you know in 15 20 years you know we'll, we'll be able to find out and have a better uh, idea of what yeah. kind of effects and what kind of damage you can take in this sport but anyways Luigi what's the game plan here not for this fight but what's the game plan for the remainder of your career is it put together a couple wins try to make a run you know maybe get back to the UFC is it something where you know get a couple wins together and look for a, a Bellator World Series of Fighting something like that or is it just you know continue to fight, make a little bit of money here and there, and, uh, you know, go out on a high note. What's what's the plan here? Um, you know, the, the plan is, man, it's, it's, you know, it'd be nice, you know, like, it'd, it'd be nice to get back in the UFC, you know what I mean? Because that's where, you know, everybody gets the notoriety. That's where everybody gets the money and the exposure. You know, people, if you're fighting in the UFC, you know, that people know who you are, you know, it's, it, it's gonna, you know, from a marketing standpoint, it really helps you out, uh, you know, and, and, and you know, if you're not fighting in the UFC, people don't really know who you are, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the World Series fighting is, is a young uh, promotion. Right. But now a lot of people, you know, uh, have watched it. Uh, Bellator, you know, they're on Spike. And, you know, I mean, but they've been around for, what, a few years now? Mm-hmm. But still, people doesn't, don't know who the Bellator guys are, you know what I mean? They right. know who the UFC guys are. So, if one of those, you know, opportunities come up where I can go to one of those shows, I would love to go, you know, if the pay is right. You know, sure, of course, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, for sure, I would love to go back to the UFC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> right, yeah, definitely, definitely. There was a time there, you know, um, mid, mid to late, 2011, 2010, around that time, where you were on a nice win streak, and I thought, uh, you know, maybe that they were going to come calling. Was, was there ever uh, a chance at that time no, that they were going to come back? No, you know, I, I, I should have tried to pursue something because, but the thing is, I just, I didn't, I was getting my own fights. You know what I mean? Like I was, I, I, I didn't have a manager. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, uh, I was just, you know, managing, really just doing everything myself. Uh, you know, and, and I was, I fought for M1. You know, and I think, you know. Yeah, on that fifth win that I had, I think I should have tried to, like, you know, maybe contact somebody or try to sign with a management group that could get me in the UFC, something like that. But, you know, I just wanted to keep going. Um, but like I said, man, I was getting injured in practice. I was getting cut, you know, and it just took it took a toll, you know, and that, that's what happened. I lost three in a row. Um, and, I, you know, I just... Shouldn't, you know, that, that really hurt, uh, that really hurt my, uh, what's the word? It just, it, it hurt me as a fighter, you know what I mean? Yeah, it hurt, as a fighter, you know, the yeah. promotions don't want to pay you, you know what I mean, what you were getting for those fights, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're just like, okay, well, we're not, you're, you're coming off three losses, so I'm only going to pay you, you know, shit money, you know, like mm-hmm. a thousand bucks or something. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, right. the local guy, you know, the local guy that can sell tickets makes more money. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, because he sells a shit ton of tickets, you know, and he might get to some ticket sales or something like that. But he, he'll he'll make you know five times more money than a guy that's you know a UFC veteran. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so for these local regional promotions. Yeah. And I mean, you mentioned well, some cases. Some cases. Yes. Yes. Of course. And you, you Not mentioned. All of them, yeah. You mentioned that, uh, you know, you had the injuries, but you look back at that time and say, you know, maybe, uh, you know, I should have waited until I'm 100% healthy and then right. taken these yeah, fights. Right. But, but, I mean, but, the but on the other, but on the other hand, you know, that's kind of a risk you had to take because if you go in, Andre Semenov, he's, you know, a lot of, uh, casual fans and maybe even some, some longtime fans maybe might not remember him from, uh, the, the pride right. days and all yeah, that. You know. Sure hardcore, you know, yeah. MMA fan that you yeah. watch, you know, early, you know, like, early 2000 UFC and pride, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I mean, he's he's a really good fighter. And then you got Joe Dirksen, who, um, you know, 
probably should have beat him, but you know, n- nevertheless, he's still a, a great fighter, and he's been around the sport yeah, yeah, a long no, time. He's a tough guy, you know. He's, you know, he's a UFC veteran, he's a Pride veteran, you know. What I mean, you know, he's he's a tough dude. Mm-hmm. So. And then you got Paul Daly, who's one of the best welterweights in the world. You fight th- against those three guys. If you win those three fights, then you know everybody's. Hey, we need Luigi Fioravanti right. in the UFC. So it's it's right. kind of um you know just the chance you had to take, and uh, you know it didn't work out for you, but you, you yeah. know so. Anyways, you know, always been curious of what your proudest moment in MMA was because you've you've had a lot of uh, highs and lows like like any fighter in in combat sports MMA whatever so you know you had the the fight against Dave Manet which was uh, fight for the troops that was um, in, in California and I I'm not sure if that was the base that you were at or not but uh, you know it was on yeah it was it was in Miramar Air Station. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you also had a, a fight for Fight for the Troops, and that was against Brody Farber. Um, but you also had a fight in Italy. You have that uh, Italian heritage. You fought against uh, Fabrizio Nascimento at the uh, first of only two shows that uh, Extreme MMA Championships put on. You you won that fight by first round KO. Um, what, what's the proudest moment of your MMA career? You know, I think it was that. Mm-hmm. You know, that moment uh, in Italy and mm-hmm. the fight in uh, the Marine Corps, uh, you know, when I fought uh, Manet, um fight in Italy because, you know, um, you know my, my family was my family. I had family there that was there. And uh, just, you know, just the fact that you're, you know, uh, there's some, you know, um, you know heritage there, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that, that was really, that was really cool. That was a lot of fun going there. And, and uh, I was really... Really glad and blessed that I was able to go there and do that. And, uh, and, you know, the Manet fight, you know, being in the, uh, the hangar with all the Marines there, you know what I mean? That was, that was pretty inspiring as well. That was, that was, that was awesome, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Now, was that your, uh, first and only trip to Italy? That the Nazi Menno? No, I've been there, I've been there before, oh. but never for a fight. Mm-hmm. That was the first time, uh, I went there to, to compete in anything. Mm hmm. How's the MMA scene there? We don't hear hardly anything from Italy. Yeah, it's not big there, you know what I mean? Like, they have shows there, but they're really small. Um, you know, they're mostly, uh, you know, in, in, in other countries, like, you know, England. Um, you know, I think France is starting to do something now. Um, you know, Germany has some stuff. You know, just some of the, Poland, real, it's real big. It's starting to get big in Poland and some of those Eastern European countries. Mm-hmm. They, they like it a lot out there. But uh, not not in Italy. Italy is uh, big, you know, like kickboxing, you know, boxing, and then um, that's a little bit bigger over there. And then um, soccer, of course, you know, that's, that's real big. Mm-hmm. Why do you think MMA isn't that popular? Do you think it has to do with uh, they don't have the you know the big massive stars uh, that come from Italy and fight because uh, like kickboxing's big because uh, Giorgio Petrosian he's um, you know one of the best in the world and he's from Italy. Do, do you think that that plays right. a factor that they don't have that, that star that they can look to because uh, I was talking to yeah, Rob McCullough and he said that uh, that's probably why kickboxing in the United States hasn't caught on because you know there isn't that you know face of uh, U.S. kickboxing that uh, the American fans can gravitate toward too so do you think that right. that's the, the, the problem with well, Italy because, MMA? Well here's the thing okay so like, well, they have Sakara. I mean Sakara right. he's a pretty well known you know he's a UFC guy Right. You know, he's like the biggest guy to come out of Italy. You know, they they got some other guys that from Italy that fly around. You know, and some you know Bellator and stuff like that. Um, you know, I just don't think I don't think it's gonna catch on with them. You know, like I, I, the Europeans have a different uh, <laughs> they got a little different attitude towards MMA than than, uh, than Americans, even Eastern Europeans. It's it's different, man. Like it's just different attitude towards you know they're just mm-hmm. um, like in, you know they. they they're not very, this is kind of funny, but, like, they, they like, acts of violence and stuff like that, you know, like, they think it's, like, kind of, kind of like we were in the 90s, like, oh, this is kind of barbaric, you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of like that. You know, while, while kickboxing is a little bit more, you know, they got the big, you know, the bigger gloves, it's a little bit more, uh, it's like, you know, it's more technical, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, even though MMA is very more, you know, very technical, if not more technical, you know, they just don't look at it that way, you know, because of the cage aspect, you know, they're thinking, you know, you know, and, and, and they, you know, they're thinking it's, it's uh, you know, barbaric in a sense, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, and, 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 and this is funny because, the, the, you know, the Coliseum is in Italy, you know what I mean? Sure, <laughs> sure, and stuff. of course. But that whole mindset is gone, man. Like, it's, it's kind of like that Western Europe, you know, they're, they're just kind of, 
they don't really condone that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, Luigi, you know, you fought at 185 and at 170 throughout your career. You, you've gone back and forth. Uh, not a whole lot, but, but you've fought in both weight classes. Um, have, you, have you settled on one, or are you open to, you know, fighting whichever one uh, somebody offers you? And, and you know, it's... Uh, I'm at both uh, weight classes. You know, 85 is, is... I don't have to cut a lot of weight. You know, I don't have to get to 85. You know, I can eat a little more and stuff like that. You know, 170, I got to do a little bit more discipline with the weapon. And, you know, uh, you know, to, to get the weight down. But uh, you know, I, the thing is nowadays, man, it's just, you know these guys that are fighting. Like before, you know, at eighty five, you know, guys aren't, aren't big at all. You know what I mean? Like they weren't as big as they are now. You know, guys are cutting more weight. You know, you got guys that are coming down from two twenty that are fighting at one eighty five. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, these guys are huge now. You know what I mean? And, and even at one seventy, guys are cutting from these massive weights. You know, two ten. You know, don't, don't, don't think that some of these guys walk around like 190, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, they're walking around like 210, you know, and they're, 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 they're cutting their cut way down to, to uh, 170. You know, some guys don't. Some guys like to walk around a little lighter, you know, and uh, so. Yeah. I think, they, you know, the, with the weight water manipulation and, you know, the way, like, you know, science and stuff like that is starting to, you know, become a become a factor now, too, you know, with their the, what they put in their bodies as in, uh, you know, the different supplements and stuff like that, you know, they're able to cut the weight and still be able to perform at a high level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely hear what you're saying because, um, you know, for a long time, uh, Nate Marquardt was thought to be, you know, a, a massive middleweight. You know, everyone's like, oh, you know, he's he's so right. big for the weight class, and now he fights at 170, so uh, it's know, just a sign of the like, times. Yeah. When, he, when he made 170, I was like, damn, that's a big dude, because yeah. I, I've, met, I've met Nate before, and he's not a little guy, you know what I mean? He's like 6'1", you know, he's, you know, he's probably, you know, when he was fighting that eight middleweight, he probably had to, you know, pack on some some yeah. weight, but, I mean, he, you know, he looked like he would probably walk around about 200 pounds or more, you know, but that's the thing, like, Guys that walk around at 200 pounds, they go down to 170 now, you know? Guys that are, like, 185 are fighting at 55, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. You know, that's what, you know, remember there was an article recently about GSP, and everybody's, like, pushing him to fight. And uh, Silva, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. And, and he said, man, it's, it, it'd be easier for me to go to 155 than to go up away to 185. Yeah. He walks around at 190, you know what I mean? There's guys that walk around at that weight that fight at 55. Mm-hmm. Now, as someone who you know uh, trains in MMA every day, and, and you you go through you know ha- having to you know weight cutting for for the fights, um, you know how difficult is it to add size? You know because a lot of people always talk about well you know I can't uh, you know make this weight anymore because you know it's draining my body too much to cut down that, so I need to go to a to an above weight class. But then they find out once they get to the weight class above the weight class they were formerly fighting in, uh, they find that they're undersized. How difficult right. is it to add the size um, with all the training that's done? Well, yeah, the thing, it, it, yeah, and like you said, it's, it's it's actually hard. You know what I mean? To like put on, like if you're a smaller guy and you want to, you know, go up a weight class, you know, because like you know, the thing is, is like some, and, and it also has to do with genetics. You know, each everybody has different body types. Uh, some guys can put on more muscle than others. Some guys can't. You know, some guys can lose weight faster, mm. and so forth. But uh, you know, the thing is too, like. Um, if they did add more weight classes, I think it would be easier, you know what I mean, for, for guys to, you know, be able to, like, you know, if there was, like, a, uh, you know, uh, like a 65 weight class or 75 weight class mm-hmm. and then an 85, you know, you know, just, you know, like kind of like boxing, you know, right, maybe right. not as many as boxing, but um, if they add more weight classes in there, I think mm-hmm. that could help. Mm-hmm. Also, you know, I think with those... Some of these guys that are doing all these massive weight cuts over and over again, it's going to take a toll on them, you know what I mean? Because they're going to, you know, because, they, you know, it's hard to keep that, that, that diet regimen all year round, you know what I mean? Like, and just say, okay, I'm just going to stick with this. You know, you know, especially guys that have a harder time losing the weight, you know what I mean? Like, not, not everybody, most guys are leaner than others, you know, and like I said, some guys have higher metabolisms, you know, so it's easier for them, you know? But some guys that, you know, cut this massive amount of weight, I think over and over again, it starts to take a toll on your body, you know, and your, and your body just, like, tells you, it slows your metabolism down, and your body's like, I don't want to do this no more. Mm-hmm. You know, you're killing yourself. Um, so they think, okay, I'm going to go up a weight class, and then they find out that there's another guy that's going <laughs> to a lot of weight, mm-hmm. you know, to move to that weight class, and so he ends up being bigger, mm-hmm. you know. So um, sometimes it's better to just maybe just cut less amount of weight, you know, and just be feel a little bit, you know, feel a little bit more better, um, in, the, in your natural weight class, you know? Mm-hmm. 
Definitely, so definitely. Trying to walk around a little bit lighter, you know, than than than, than uh than previous, you know. Instead of cutting thirty pounds, only cut fifteen pounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I always say that, but I'm the worst at that. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we we've seen just you know some some crazy things with with weight classes, and uh, you know we've seen guys who you would never think you know would fight at, at a low weight class, and they're able to drop the weight. Then we've seen guys you know maybe they need to go up a weight class, and then they you know keep going on up. Like Anthony Johnson, you know he couldn't make one seventy anymore. He fought yeah. at one eighty five against Vitor Belfort, but he couldn't make well, that no, weight. He, he couldn't and, make yeah, he couldn't make one eighty five. Then he goes up to to two hundred five, and he and he looks great. And then they decide to throw him in a heavyweight. So I mean, we just get a mixed bag with with these weight classes, and right. once we once we and, figure and out, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say once we you know try to figure out you know hey this is you know how you weight cut or this is how you pack on size we get a new case like this and then every theory goes out the window. So you know right. just another just another thing in this this young time in this sport that you know still maybe, needs to you be know, figured maybe out. Maybe they need to regulate weight cutting too. You right. know what I mean? Maybe right. they need to uh, enforce the rule for saying okay, well you know. Uh, you know, in some states, they kind of do, like North Carolina, you can't weigh a certain amount, uh, I think you can't be like 15 pounds over the next day. Mm-hmm. They have two weigh-ins, you know, they have one uh, the day before, and then they have one the morning of the flight, and you can't be like 15 pounds over mm-hmm. to regulate that, you know what I mean? And I think, I think that definitely, you know, if, you know, if, if they, impl- you know, implement that rule other states, you know what I mean, then guys won't be cutting as much weight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, because most guys, you know, they rehydrate. They're already yeah. twenty pounds in like two hours. You know? Yeah, I mean, they're like, well, shit. I'm already, you know, almost yeah. one seventy. I'm one ninety five. You know what I mean? Uh, if, if if that's the case, then they're screwed if they have that weight that weight, uh, you know, requirement mm-hmm. restriction. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, uh, Luigi, uh, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank? And is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank uh, MMA Overload. Um, MMA Sport Federation. Um, I'd like to thank uh, my friend uh, Jim Jenkins. Um, I'd also like to thank Flawless Management and uh, Fla- Flawless uh, Fighting Championships for uh, giving me the opportunity. And uh, fans, they look for me to make a comeback. And that, that's it. And thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thanks for taking the time to talk. You know, I know this was a long one, so, uh, you know, I appreciate uh, the time, and I, you know, wish you the best of luck at Flawless FC3, uh, May 18th against Edwin Aguilar. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it.